So far, this tiny house journey has moved at rocket pace. I cannot wait to see it finish. Now over halfway built, Stan's progress has been impressive. Imagine this, parked up at the beach, checking out the surf. But there's still a long way to go before the tiny house is open to the public, and they decide if they're ready to live small. Ooh, looking good, mate. From the outset, it was important that the tiny house be truly livable for Kiwis, with no compromise on building code requirements or healthy building guidelines. And a must-have on both counts is premium insulation. One of the reasons for us going with timber framing is so we can get extra insulation in. Today we're going to be insulating the outside walls. We're going to be using mammoth insulation. It's made in New Zealand. It's made from 70% recycled materials. It could also help with noise reduction. For the installation process, basically it's just measure it, cut it, slip it straight in and make sure we give the area a good clean before we start. Installation complete, Geordie and the boys can get ahead with wrapping the building and attaching the exterior cladding. Now I have chosen ply for our exterior cladding. There's many different types of ply that you can get. Smooth, rough sawn, V-groove, tongue and groove. What I've decided to go for is a band sword finish. Kind of a little bit rustic, but also it'll have a modern edge. Now I can stain that dark or I could whitewash it, but I have chosen white for our joinery, so whatever the colour is on the outside will have to match that. With the boys on track, Stan has some important decisions to make around kitchen and lighting choices. At this stage, it's crucial to stay one step ahead of the schedule as new trades are turning up every day. I've got the sparky turning up shortly, so I need to make some decisions on lighting. What I'm thinking is LED downlights. The reason for that is it's quite a nice minimal look. Also, I've got a small ceiling cavity and the light produces very little heat, so it's great in that tiny space and they use very, very little power. We've added up all our LED lamps. What that comes to is about 60 watts, which is what you would normally have for an old halogen bulb. The next thing that's going to be happening is our kitchen install. Now our kitchen layout is really generous because we're hiding all our appliances under the bench top. That gives us a real big workspace. And because I've got a pull-out pantry, that's also going to create a lot of storage. Today I'll be picking up all my Nouveau Impressions kitchen. The reason I'm using that range is because effectively I can just pick it up straight off the shelf, start assembling it as soon as I get back to site. No lead in time on big ticket items like kitchens means no hold-ups for the team on site. Paperwork is pretty much the boringest part of the job by far. Any day I'd rather be swinging a hammer, but it's actually quite a good opportunity for me just to go over the job, whether I just walk around and making notes of things that need to be ordered for the next day or things that we need to start addressing before the tradesmen come in. Yeah, hey Clint, I thought I'd just give you a courtesy phone call. Just want to have a chat about, need another PowerPoint up by this fuse box up here. If you can ring a tradie up at the end of the day and just say, hey, look, I think we might be about an hour too late, that's great for them because they're really busy. Next morning, the tiny house site's back in full swing, and it's a day of major installations. Today we're cracking into it. We've got a lot of trades on site. We've got the sparky turning up. We're going to finish off the bathroom, finish off the kitchen. Now, that's arriving as flat pack, so we've got to assemble it. The reason why we're doing that is going to save us a ton of money. The sink we've chosen is a really big, deep sink. It doesn't have a side drain on it, which means I've got a lot more bench space. There's still a lot to do, but everyone's on the same mission to get it completed. Today we're just getting ready, fitting it off. We're pre-wired already. Then we've got to do the switchboard and get it certified. Done. We've tried to keep this as simple as possible. There's no hanging lights. 
You don't want to be banging your head on things. We've gone with recess lights here to try and give you as much headroom as possible. Just finishing off the plumbing, wiring, and then once all of that's done, we're going to get our lino laid. We were thinking about going with bamboo flooring. Even though it looks great and it's a great product, it's really heavy, so we're going with something that looks really good, but it's a lot lighter. Most of the heavy lifting is now done, and the project becomes more details focused. The finishing touches are the most visible, so are vitally important to get right. We've decided to go with a whitewash on our ply. That way we can still sort of see the wood grain effect, but it's not too woody. The exterior paint colour that we've gone for is like a weathered cedar sort of a look. It's not going to look too brand new and it's got to match the interior finish quite nicely too. Kitchen's in, bathroom's in, there's just a little bit of finishing on the inside and a little bit more on the outside so we can see the light at the end of the tunnel, I'm getting happy. Kiwis are renowned for finding innovative solutions and the Mitre 10 tiny house is no exception. Yes. Building an alternative to big budget housing was a huge undertaking. But could this small structure open up a world of exciting possibilities? It's really good to get the hammer down. It's so good to get this project finished and stand back and have a look at it. It's been long, long hours, but I thoroughly enjoyed it. I think one of the reasons that I really like this build is because the materials are straight off the shelf, like the plywood, for example, on the inside. Essentially, everything in here is a DIY project. We really wanted to maximise the bathroom space. Having that corner shower in there, it doesn't feel pokey at all. From the outset, we wanted to design a space that would suit many different New Zealanders, and I think we've actually captured that. It's got options to change things around. If you wanted to pull out bed down here, you could easily do that. If you wanted extra storage above the shower area, you could take that mattress out there and turn those into covens. I can't wait for the New Zealand public to have a look at it. I'm really looking forward to having feedback to see what they think about it. Morning, everyone. Morning. Who wants to see it? Yeah. Excellent, come on in. I really loved it. I want to build one myself. It's an amazing opportunity to see a tiny house and to see George Clarence. You can keep your bottles of gin in there. Exactly. <laughs> I just love it.